Good morning, my name is Christine Kong and I'm an abdominal radiologist at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today I'll be talking about imaging of perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. My objective is to review the role that imaging plays in diagnosis of this tumor and in determining surgical resectability. I will also discuss the pros and cons of CT versus MRI. Perihilar cholangiocarcinoma is a tumor involving the large bile ducts near the hilum of the liver, the common hepatic, right hepatic, or left hepatic duct. Unlike some other tumors, cholangiocarcinoma can have a variety of appearances. In the introductal type, there is a papillary or polypoid mass within the duct, and the duct is distended at the site of the tumor. This causes biliary obstruction, as you can see, by the dilated bile ducts upstream or more peripheral to the tumor. The wall of the bile duct at the site of the tumor is usually of normal thickness. The tumor is hypoenhancing relative to the liver and can look like a tumor thrombus, except it's in the bile duct rather than in a vein. This type is much less common than the other two types and also has a better prognosis. Differential diagnosis would include a metastasis, which is rare. The mass forming type of cholangiocarcinoma is the most common type in the intrahepatic location. And as its name suggests, it's a mass with rounded or lobulated margins. In the perihilar location, the most common type is the periductal or a periductal plus mass forming type. So I'll describe these two together. The periductal infiltrating type typically begins as tumor cells infiltrating the wall of the bile duct, which results in bile duct wall thickening and enhancement, as you can see in the proximal left hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct in this case. The lumen of the duct is narrowed, resulting in a stricture. There is upstream biliary dilatation. The wall of the uninvolved bile duct, more proximal to the stricture, as well as more distal, is usually of normal thickness. Differential diagnosis for this type of cholangiocarcinoma would be with an inflammatory stricture, which also demonstrates wall thickening and enhancement, as in this example of IgG4-related cholangitis. Surgical resection is the best chance for cure for these patients, so determining resectability is a major goal of imaging. That entails being able to localize the tumor, determine its extension in the biliary tree, and whether it extends outside the duct to involve the hepatic artery, portal vein, or surrounding hilar structures. We also assess for anatomic variants, nodal and distant metastases, evidence of decreased liver function, and estimate the future liver remnant volume. Due to time constraints, I'll focus on the first three. This is a 60-year-old woman who presented with elevated liver enzymes. We already saw this coronal image. Here are arterial phase images from the biliary CT. You can see dilated bile ducts obliterated at the hilum. As we go inferiorly, we can see that the bile duct becomes of normal caliber. As we go up back up, we see the soft tissue involving the bile duct and extending outside the bile duct, uh, focally into the liver, encasing the right hepatic artery there. A biliary protocol CT is similar to a liver protocol in that it includes pre-contrast, arterial, portal venous, and delayed phase images. The difference is that the biliary protocol uses thinner collimation of 1 to 1.25 millimeters. We saw the enhancing bile duct and the soft tissue extending focally into the liver and encasing the right hepatic artery on the prior arterial phase images. On the portal venous and delayed images, we can see this hypoenhancing mint into the liver, abutting the right portal vein, and we can see delayed enhancement in this area, indicating tumor fibrosis. This patient also had an MRI. MRI includes various sequences that are weighted for different properties of tissues. A T2-weighted sequence is sensitive to fluid, which appears bright. You can see dilated bile ducts terminating abruptly at the hilar confluence. There appears to be some soft tissue around the stricture, but the relationship to the hepatic artery or portal vein cannot be seen on this non-contrast MRI. An MRCP is a heavily T2-weighted sequence such that the fluid is very bright and everything else is dark. On this maximum intensity projection image, you can see all of the dilated bile ducts in the liver 
abruptly terminating at the hilum. The gallbladder and the pancreatic duct, the common hepatic duct, as well as fluid in the stomach and part of the left ureter are well seen. Similar to an ERCP, we see the site of the ear obstruction very well. However, we can't tell what's going on outside the duct, whether there is invasion of surrounding structures. This is just a normal uh, MRCP for comparison. You can see that normally the intrahepatic bile ducts are barely visualized. Based on the biliary CT and the MRI, this patient has a bismuth correlate type 2 perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. The tumor involves the roof of the common hepatic duct bifurcation, but does not extend to the secondary bifurcation on either side. It involved uh, the right hepatic artery, butted the right portal vein, and extended into the right liver. So this patient was treated with right hepatectomy, caudate lobectomy, bile duct resection, and hepatodrenal lymphadenectomy. Surgical path confirmed our imaging findings. The tumor invaded outside the wall of the bile duct into surrounding tissues and the adjacent liver. Our next patient is a 49-year-old man who presented with pruritus and fever. He had a contrast-enhanced MRI. We can see dilated bile ducts bilaterally. On the right side, we can see that the right anterior and posterior ducts meet indicating that the secondary bifurcation is patent on the right side. On the left side, we'll see that they do not meet, and there is infiltrative soft tissue centered on the left hilar fissure. You can also see this focal narrowing of the main portal vein. We'll go back up, we'll see that focal narrowing. This is the right hepatic artery with some soft tissue in the hilum. This patient had a uh, biliary stent placed on the right side, which led to some decompressed ducts on the right, but then he had a biliary CT. You can see that the bile ducts are decompressed on the right side. You see this infiltrative mass in the left hilum. Uh, and that soft tissue extends into the liver hilum, focally narrowing the main portal vein, as you can see there. Based on the uh, pattern of bile duct obstruction, this patient has a type 3B perihilar cholangiocarcinoma. If we want to, I'm going to compare individual images now so we can compare the two types of studies. On the arterial phase images, we can see that there is arterial hyperperfusion of the left liver, a better seen on the MRI, and this is due to left portal vein occlusion. The right hepatic artery is mildly narrowed and we, we can see enhancement of the uh, common hepatic duct. On the CT, we can see this ill-defined soft tissue in the liver hilum encasing the right hepatic artery. We see the contour of the hepatic artery better on the CT. On the portal venous phase images, we can see soft tissue in the hilum, focal narrowing of the uh, main portal vein just before the bifurcation. On the CT, we see the caliber of that portal vein better, we could measure it uh, better, more accurately, if we want it on the CT. We see all the soft tissue tumor in the liver hilum, and we see the stent in the common hepatic duct. We don't see the wall of the duct as well because we have a stent there. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter because we have so much soft tissue outside the duct. If we had an early tumor, this inability to see the wall of the duct may ham hamper our ability to diagnose the extent of tumor. Also on the portal venous phase, we see this infiltrative uh, hypo-enhancing soft tissue centered on the left hilar fissure, and we see that same finding on the CT. On the MRI, on the delayed images, we could see delayed enhancement within this area, indicating tumor fibrosis. Uh, you can also note that after the stent has been placed, there is decompressed uh, biliary ducts, which um, can obscure the site of obstruction. Uh, there's also some artifact from the stent which could obscure the site of obstruction. Also on the portal venous phase, we saw a peritoneal nodule in the right pericolic gutter on the MRI. And on the CT, we saw that same nodule as well as an additional nodule superior to this. Um, this nodule uh, we could not see even in retrospect on the MRI. 
And on the CT, you can see this fuzzy margin of the nodule, which is typical for peritoneal metastasis. So in conclusion, MRI and biliary CT have comparable diagnostic performance for predicting the biliary extent of tumor. MRI has better soft tissue contrast. High resolution biliary protocol CT is more accurate for vascular invasion, can be combined with a CT of the chest and pelvis for a full staging examination that's less susceptible to motion artifact due to a shorter breath hold, and the CT is more sensitive for small peritoneal implants. However, it can be limited by stent artifact, and it's important to try to get imaging, high quality imaging, before placement of a stent. Thank you for your attention.